Hello everyone. Last time we took a look at the Titans, now let's see what we know about the Old Gods. The Old Gods are not native to Azeroth, they simply infected it. They're also not bound to Azeroth itself, since an Old God has been seen in Outland. It's uncertain where exactly the Old Gods came from, but what we do know is that they were fighting with each other. In this war they used the Elemental Lords and they pitched the elements against each other. That is of course until the Titans came and imprisoned them beneath the earth. Depending on the source, 3, 4 or 5 old gods lie imprisoned beneath Azeroth. I'll once again go with the Old Gods and the Ordering of Azeroth book, which states that the Titans imprisoned 5 evil gods far beneath the surface of the world. The Old Gods are the counterparts of the Titans, where the Titans want order, the Old Gods want chaos. The Old Gods used the Curse of Flesh to weaken the seed races. This weakness would make them easier to manipulate and would cause some of the early races to evolve into the species that we know today. The seed races are the original races created by the Titans and for example you have the Irvin that evolved into the Dwarves or the Vrykul into the Humans. The first Old God that we discovered in Classic was named Kafoon. Now either it's Kafoon or C.T. Hun, I just say Kafoon. The prophecy of Kafoon claims that a battle between a Titan and Kafoon raged in Syllabus. A Titan fell, but may not have died, and an old god had also fallen. However, the old god did survive, and he survived unnoticed by the Titans. For millennia he lay dormant beneath the world, biding its time. From its prison, it waited for the exact moment at which to strike back at those that would see it harmed. Over time, the Well of Eternity would give life to the creatures known as the Silivet. Kafoon used the Silivet to create avatars of his image, later known as Kirai. The Kirai would name the old god Kafoon, and Kafoon was born. The great fortress city of Ankirai was created to house their growing armies and prepare for the coming of Kafoon. His children had spent thousands of years building an army capable of exacting revenge upon the whole of Kalimdor, and there were no Titans around to stop them this time. Only the Night Elves that once inhabited this area were there to defend. They call this the War of the Shifting Sands. The Night Elves held their ground, led by a Night Elf known as Stackhelm. Eventually the twin emperors of Ankirai would capture the son of Stackhelm and brutally execute him in front of the Night Elf forces. The war continued, but the will of the great leader was sapped. The whole of Silithus was soon engulfed by the Silithids and the Night Elves retreated to Anguro Crater. Something in Anguro Crater prevented the Kirai from being able to take the land. They referred it to it as Godlands, but it's uncertain what exactly stopped them. What we do know is that this gave the Night Elves enough time to ask the Bronze Dragonflight for help. At first they refused, but after the Caverns of Time were attacked, the Bronze Dragonflight joined the battle. Even the combined strength of the Dragonflight and the Night Elves wasn't enough to win the battle, so the Bronze asked the help of Red, Blue and Green. All of them together managed to push the Kirai back into the ruins and raise a wall that would hold them imprisoned. Until the day would come that someone would reforge the scepter of the shifting sands and hit the gong. And hit the gong we did. On January 23rd, 2006, the gates of Ankirai were opened for the first time and the path to Kafoon lay before us. Adventurers bravely fought an old god for the very first time and like the titans, they thought it was defeated. As it turns out, we merely defeated the manifestation of Kafoon. His will, his essence, is still alive. And while the Lich King attacked Stormwind City in Ogrimmar, Cho'Gal began the resurrection of his new master, the old god Kafoon. This deformed the ogre's body, which became monstrous and with similar features to his master. Eventually Cho'Gal would fail to resurrect his master, but the threat of Kafoon is ever present. Death is close. The second major manifestation that we've seen of an old god was Yaxxaron. Yaxxaron was imprisoned by the Titans inside Ulduar, and to guard him they left behind the Titanic Watchers known as Loken, Thorim, Hodir, Tyr, Mimiron and Freya. Yaxxaron wanted what every old god wants, and that is to be free again, so he corrupted his jailers, started with Loken. Loken was the chief jailer or prime designate. After his corruption, Loken subdued the other watchers and made it possible for Yaxxaron to escape. Loken was leading the Aesir, Storm Giants and Vanir, Earth Giants, but would eventually turn those against each other in order of Yaxxaron. This war between the giants would give Loken a reason for neutralizing them and he would place the Irvin, Giants and Vrykul into stasis at locations like Ulduar and Ulderman. He also killed Sif, the wife of his brother Thorim, and blamed the Frost Giants. This turned Thorim against his former allies and would later cause him to give in to despair. All in all, Loken became as corrupted as could be and like I said, this allowed Yaxxaron to escape his bindings. How could we have missed this until now? <clears throat> ah, King Varian, thank you for coming on such short notice. What's this all about, Ronan? I've 
I've called you here to ask for your help. While our efforts against the Lich King press on, Bran here has brought us frightening news of the horrors beneath Ulduar and of its dark prisoner. Prisoner? Huh. With its binding shattered, its influence unchecked, it's gonna come after us, and we're gonna be the prisoners. You can see now what we're up against. If this evil is not stopped, then the armies of the oh Death no. God will march on our doorstep. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> well, what do you propose we do? Thrall, what are you doing here so soon? The summons sounded dire, Jaina. What's happened? <sighs> Bran Bronzebeard's forces assaulted the gates of Uduar. They battled the Iron Lords and their cursed minions. Permeating the great halls, stirring in their minds, chilling their blood. He said, the horror that the Titans imprisoned so long ago, Yog saron has awakened. Bren Bronzebeard would explore Ulduar in Wrath of the Lich King in search of hidden Titan knowledge or treasure. What he found was not what he expected, and he quickly made his way to the Kirin Sor, asking them for aid in breaching Ulduar and placing yogg back in his confinements. The heroes of the Horde and the Alliance answered the call, and they made their way through Ulduar, freeing the Guardians Fordim, Hodir, Mimiron and Freya from their corruption. Those that are still paying attention might have noticed that there is one Watcher missing, namely Tyr. It's unknown where Tyr currently is. All we know is that he wasn't in Ulduar when we arrived, and that he left his watch's tower without a struggle. Who knows, we might see him again in the future. The heroes made their way to the chamber of Yaxaron, and with the help of the guardians managed to subdue him. What's interesting to note is that during the Yaxaron encounter, players were able to witness three events from the history of Warcraft. You had the creating of the Dragon Soul, Before too long, you will soon learn yours. The assassination of King Lien by Corona Half Orkin. The clans are united under Black Hand in this assault. They will stand together until Stormwind has fallen. Gul'dan is bringing up his warlocks by nightfall. Until then, the Black Rock clan will be trying to take the Eastern Wall. A thousand deaths. We will hold until the reinforcements come. As long as men with stout hearts are manning the walls and the throne, Stormwind will hold. Tremble, mortals, before the coming of the end. The Orc leaders agree with your assessment. Your petty quarrels only make me stronger. And a vision where you could see the Lich King torturing Bolvar for Dragon. Speculated that Yaxaron has influenced these three specific events, however, this is purely speculation. The manifestation of Yaxaron was defeated, and the brave heroes focused their attention against the Lich King. Time passed until the cataclysm shattered the world. Your fate is sealed! The end of days is finally upon you, and all who inhabit this miserable little seedling! Quake beneath my 
my rage. Cataclysm we don't face the old god directly, but we are told who is controlling Deathwing, namely the old god Enzov. It were the whispers of Enzov who drove Deathwing into madness, and it is rumored that Enzov is the source of corruption from the Emerald Nightmare. The goal of Deathwing is to fulfill an ancient prophecy called the Hour of Twilight, where all defenses fail and the old gods are free to roam the world once again. As most of you will remember, we defeated Deathwing with the help of the Dragon Aspects and Thrall. In the end cinematic we are told that the Dragon Aspects have fulfilled their purpose and that their ancient powers are expanded. But now, we must see it. With mortal eyes, we dragon aspects have fulfilled our great purpose and our ancient power is expended. And this is the main reason why I hated Cataclysm so, so much. I won't complain about the, how they're going to return the dragon soul when they don't have control over time anymore. That's time travel, you know, that's... You can give a spin to that. What I can't understand is that Alex Raza says that they fulfilled their destiny. So bear with me, right? Their destiny was apparently to stop the Hour of Twilight. The one causing the Hour of Twilight is Deathwing, in order of the Old Gods. Deathwing became the puppet of the Old Gods because he received the power from the Titans. This gave him a connection to the Earth, driving him insane by the whispers of the Old Gods, yeah? So he received these powers to apparently stop the Hour of Twilight, which he would cause because of those powers. So if you take away giving the powers bit, there would be no Deathwing, there would be no Hour of Twilight, and the whole reason of giving their powers would fall away. This just doesn't make sense to me. And did everyone just forget about the old god Enzov, who actually put this all in motion? Wouldn't it be handy to have dragon aspects to clean up this mess? And what about the unnamed old god that we still don't know about? You are Azeroth's true guardians, and the future of this world is in your hands. For the dawning of the Age of Mortals has begun. Besides that bit, Alexstrasza says that it's the Age of Mortals. And what do we mortals do? Bomb Faramore and invade Pandaria. Very good call, Alexstrasza. Well done. With that little rant said, it's time to take a look at the next name old god in Pandaria. I'm going to tell you the couple of the theories that people have come up with and see what the future might bring. I will do this in the next video since it will contain spoilers for 5.2 so that people can make the choice for themselves if they want spoilers or not. Thank you for watching, hit subscribe if you like my videos and until next time guys, see ya!